Okay, today I'm going to change the oil in my Honda Pioneer 700 four-seater. And I want to talk for just a minute about this machine. This is a great machine. I've had it since um, December of 2019. I bought it in mid-December 2019. It's a wonderful machine. It's uh, really strong. It carries four people with no problem. Um, performs very well. So we're going to do an oil change and let me show you what you need to change your oil and uh, go ahead and get all your uh, stuff assembled ahead of time. I'm also going to do an air filter change. So what you're going to need first off is uh, oil filters and take my advice always buy extra oil and an extra oil filter just because if, if you're changing your oil and you put a new filter in and you drop it on the ground and it gets dirt on it just throw it away get a new one don't put something dirty back in your engine so that's the oil filter you need and they're pretty cheap the oil and the filter all together was forty dollars so I, I make sure i always buy extra i keep an extra oil filter on hand all the time um, i live in central mississippi i use 10w30 I recommend you always buy the GN4 um, Genuine Honda oil. This is four stroke, four stroke oil. Do not put car oil in your, uh, your motorbike or your, or your Pioneer or your side-by-side. -side. Buy the oil they recommend. Um, this is the air filter I use. This is gonna be my third air, air filter change. When you're changing your oil, always have a bowl, and that sounds crazy, but when you take parts off your engine, you don't wanna sit them on the ground are on a dirty tarp just just have a clean bowl sit them in the bowl i always have paper towel because as i take parts off the engine i wipe them down to make sure they're clean before i want i want everything clean that goes back on my engine all right you're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench you're going to need a um, 10 millimeter socket you're also going to need a 12 millimeter socket and then the cap that goes on your oil filter, you're going to have to pull that cap off. And um, it helps to have a flat head or something with, a, with a, a flat edge to sort of pry it off. And I recommend keeping a flashlight so that even in daylight, you can tell it's really nice here where I'm at. You still want to look around your engine as long as you have your seat off and you, there's a flap under the seat. As long as you have all that out of the way, go ahead and take that opportunity to inspect your engine. So that's why I've got the flashlight. So here's how we do this. First off, you have to remove your seat, and it's real easy. The seat comes right out with no problem. All right. There's your oil filler cap. Um, I hope you can see it. Let's put the flashlight on it. There's your uh, dipstick, and notice that uh, it's it's 10 o'clock in the morning. It's daylight out, but um, it's still sort of difficult to see on camera down here. So I've got the flashlight. Let's walk around to the other side. You see that thing right there with a the bolt on it? Um, that's where your oil filter is. So it's sort of difficult to get, get down in here. I don't know. Oil. Um, Honda could have done a better design on this, but uh, anyhow, it is what it is. You have to take that loose. And um, there's, there's pieces in there you don't want to lose, so you got to be really careful. So. Let's get the oil pan set up and get underneath and let's get started. Yeah, one more thing before I change the oil. Um, you notice I've got the Pioneer sitting on level ground. I've seen people change their oil by pulling the front end up on ramps. Don't do that. You have to have it level. And uh, also, here's where the oil drain plug is. Honda put it in the most convenient place they could think of see if i can get a good picture of it it's right under that plate which is pretty much in the middle of the seat on the pioneer you have to take these four bolts out so i'm going to set the camera up and then i'm going to remove those bolts and show you how to get the drain plug off Okay, to, uh, to get these off, you have to remove all four of these bolts, and these are 10 millimeter bolts. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Or is that my dear Aunt Sally? I can't remember. All right, so.
Move this plate out of the way. There's probably a bunch of trash under there if you're like me and you actually use your Pioneer off-road. So let's go to the other side now and I'll show you um, how to take this out. There's the, the bolt that has to come out. And that takes a 17 millimeter socket. All right, all you have to do is just loosen it. Usually one turn will loosen it. Now, somebody took my oil pan, so I'm gonna have a pitcher that I'm gonna put underneath this thing. And then I'm gonna have my pitcher close by. So. Okay, so there's all my bolts. The big one is the one that um, is the oil drain plug. And uh, make sure you do not lose that black O-ring. There's also a washer on here. Honda recommends you replace that washer every oil change. Um, I've already replaced it once. I replaced it last time, so I'm not gonna replace it this time, but um, don't lose that washer. So now that we've got the oil draining into my pitcher, we're gonna remove the oil filler cap and um, make sure this area is clean. Don't, uh, don't remove your cap if there's lots of trash or grass or dirt built up around it. Take your time and uh, clean it off because you don't want trash to get down in here. All right, there we go, got it. So I'm gonna take the oil filler cap. That helps the oil drain faster. And I'm gonna set that right down here on the clean tarp. And uh, the next thing to do is to remove the oil filter. So let's go around and do that. Okay, let's swap our 10 millimeter socket for the um, 12 millimeter socket to get the oil filter assembly off. Bring our paper towel, always have paper towel. Go around here. All right, so right down in there. And again, I know it's hard to see. Let's uh, see if I can set the camera up some way. All right, put some more light on it. So with all these wires in the way, it's sort of difficult to get down there. Let's see what we can do here. All right, this is a pain in the butt to get out. So now we have that out. Put it on our bowl. And this is a little bit difficult. Um, sometimes you gotta, this is what the screwdriver's for. Sometimes you gotta pry that off. So let's get the screwdriver. Okay. So, this tool is to get that thing off right there. So I'm gonna pry it off and then I'll show it to you. Okay, so we got that out. Make sure when you take this off, you don't lose that spring. That spring will pop out. It's under tension when you pull the cap off. So there's the old oil filter. When you pull it out, there's a washer on the outside edge. Make sure you don't lose that washer. So let's see if we can get it. It's gonna be sort of hard to do. All right. So the best way to do it is to stick your index finger inside the oil filter and pull it out, just like that. There you go. So there's your washer. Just make sure you don't lose that washer. So I'm gonna take it, put it in my bowl with all my other stuff. And we'll put this in the trash. Okay, so I've got that off. I wanna, I wanna tell you something to think about. Put your oil pan down underneath here before you pull that out. I forgot to say that earlier because oil is still gonna come out of there even though you've drained all the oil. Now, you may have the urge to take paper towel and clean out the area where your oil filter goes in. Do not do that. You do not wanna put paper towel in there. 
it's fine like it is as long as it, you clean the area before you change your oil don't put paper towel or anything else in there to wipe it out not even a rag because you could introduce a contaminant now leave your oil filter inside the package until you get to this point and you're ready to put it on because if you get it out it's inevitable that it's going to get dust or something else or maybe grease from your shop in there on it so leave it in the package open it from the package and put it straight in the hole okay so let's do that okay here's our oil filter i took it out of the package um notice both sides are identical there's a there's a um black bushing or a washer i don't know what you call that there's there's a, a black thing in both sides um doesn't matter which side you put in so i'm going to put it straight in and then i'm going to take my washer and put on it but first i'm going to do one quick step i'm going to actually lubricate lubricate this washer on both sides so i'm going to take a little bit of the oil from there it doesn't matter that it's used oil it's going to be covered with oil in a minute put it on that side get a little more oil put on that side okay now you can go ahead and put your washer on because it'll stick the oil is going to make it stick just be careful when you put this on you don't lose that washer all right so let's put this in i hope you can see what i'm doing there you go now we're going to take this and inspect it always look at it make sure it's clean i don't see any trash or contaminants on it inside everything looks good do not attempt to take this apart and clean it there's a spring inside and it looks like a spring there's there's a there's something inside you don't want to lose now it's time to put everything else back in so your spring is going to go just like that so just be careful when you put it on okay okay that's back on uh make sure if you when you put this on you don't over tighten it and strip this nut um, this nut right here just be careful make sure you get your washer your spring and everything in and when you're done i recommend uh clean off your your work surface clean off all the, the oil from the area around it and the reason is later if you want to check it and make sure everything looks okay if if you clean it when you do it and then you check it later and see oil and then something's wrong you don't have a good seal so when you're finished clean it really good okay so let's take our um, dipstick out the dipstick is uh that thing that has green on it make sure the area around it's clean so we got that out we're going to set our dipstick in our bowl bowl with our bolts and then we're going to take this bolt and put it back on so let's do that okay so we got three quarts in there i'm going to put my dipstick in and check it and i'm going to clean this i want to make sure it's clean and i'm important i'm using a clean paper towel when i've i've been to mechanic shops and seen them pick up a shop rag off the floor and wipe a dipstick with it if you ever see anybody do that stop them and then go somewhere else okay so the proper way to do this is to put the stick in and not screw it down okay you pull it out you look and see how much oil is on it and uh, i'm going to do it one more time always double check always all right so it looks full i've got three quarts in it let's check it one more time all right yep yeah, the third time I saw now I'm, I need um, a little bit more oil. I'll check it one more time. Yep, so yeah, I need to put that extra little bit in. So I've got part of a leftover cord here. Just gonna put a little bit in and check it again. Not a lot. And you don't want to overfill because you can't take oil back out. There's no, there's no way on these machines built in to take oil back out. Okay. 
so don't overfill. All right, looks great. That's the perfect amount of oil. All right, so let's clean up. So now, let's get our funnel out of here. Wipe that down, make sure it's nice and clean. Put my cap back on, make sure your cap is clean. Don't put a dirty cap back on here. It's worth taking a minute to clean this just to make sure. Always double check. If you're doing this on a windy day, you know wind can blow dirt and get on your, your filler cap. Check every part you put on your engine. Just make absolutely sure you're not putting some sort of dirt back in your engine. The oil filter's there to uh, filter out any trash, but do your best job to avoid putting any trash in your engine. All right, that looks good. My cap's on, so now I'm gonna put the dipstick in, screw it down. Okay, so everything's back on, and uh, I think the oil change is complete. I'm gonna drive it around for a few minutes and we'll check it again. But first, let's change the air filter, so let's get that ready. Okay, so now let's change the air filter. On the Pioneer, let's put the bed up. I got lots of junk in there. All right, let's sit the, see if I can put you over here where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you gotta get underneath here to do this. So to change the air filter, you gotta take this plate off. And I've already loosened it up because I had to figure this out. And then you take this off. Pull these tabs back. This will come right off. Like that. And there's your air filter, which is nasty. So you need a Phillips head screwdriver to get this loose. So let's do that. Okay, so I got my Phillips head. Let's take this loose. And, um, you know, I didn't see a lot of YouTube videos when I was researching this on changing air filters. So I wanna give you some advice. When you change your oil filter, change your air filter. These machines cost a lot of money and uh, take care of them. Just make it a habit. When you change one, change the other one. It's so stuck on. And you can clean these, but I recommend you don't. I suggest you don't try to clean it. All right, there we go. So as you can see underneath your uh, air filter, you have this thing. Now there's also some trash down here. So I'm gonna get the vacuum and I'm gonna vacuum out the trash from this. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now, like I said about the oil filter, I recommend you keep your air filter sealed in the, in the plastic bag until you're ready to put it on. Okay, so now I, I've, uh, I've talked to somebody about this and the proper way to do this is to take the entire assembly off and, and that's a much bigger job, but to get this off, you have to do that. So um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna slip this filter down over that uh, metal filter. Okay, that was a uh, that was a interesting pain in the butt. So let's put the seal back on. Of course, the whole time I'm trying to do this, I've got mosquitoes on my legs. In Mississippi, we have mosquitoes until uh, middle of January. All right, so let's tighten this back down. Make sure you have this metal. Uh, 
o-ring metal uh, clamp properly in place tighten it good don't over tighten it as with everything don't over tighten it or you'll be sorry later now this metal clamp you can't go to AutoZone and buy this or Walmart or anywhere like that because this has to be a certain width to fit this filter. So, and I, I don't mean the diameter, I mean the, the actual width of the piece of metal. So, um, anyhow, that's done. Get it tucked back in there just right. And uh, we're good to go. So let's put this back on. Inspect it. Make sure you have a good seal all the way around it. You see how dirty this is. You don't want this dirt inside there, okay? So just make sure you have a good seal. All right, that's done. Let's put this other piece back on. This has tabs. These tabs go down here underneath something. Always take your time. Make sure you got everything back in place just right. And pop this back down. And this is not difficult. There we go. All right. So that's back in place. Put that back down. Now. I want to say something about the uh, Pioneer and doing an oil change, okay? And this is important. Um, don't attempt to do this unless you're 100% confident in what you're doing, okay? Watch about 30 YouTube videos. Make sure you're confident in what you're doing. Make sure you know all the steps. These vehicles, my vehicle was about 13 grand. These can run up to $30,000 and um, you don't want to pay that much money for it. And if you're a weekend warrior, decide you're going to get out on the weekend, you're going to service it. And um, a lot of people who don't do this all the time are not really prepared for it. Make sure you have the right parts from Honda. Make sure you have the right tools. Make sure you know what you're doing. If not, go ahead and take this to the dealership and pay someone $150 or $175 to change your oil. You might even can get it done cheaper than that and change your filter. So. Don't attempt this unless you're 100% confident in what you're doing. Don't get halfway into it, especially on a Saturday or Sunday when all the dealerships are closed. They close at noon on Saturday and they're closed all day Sunday. So don't get halfway into this and realize you screwed up, okay? Go ahead and take it and let them do it. A lot of dealerships will even teach you how to do it. At least mine will. So anyhow, 